Welcome back to Arise Exchange. The platinum strikes in South Africa continue, where work at the world's three largest producers of the precious metal has come to a halt. Thousands of workers are demanding an increase in pay to $1,127 a month. This is almost double the current entry-level pay. Officials say the negotiations have continued between the two sides, but no deal has been reached. South Africa has the largest reserves of platinum and relies heavily on metal exports for more than half of its foreign exchange earnings. The country's currency, the RAND, has slumped to its weakest level against the dollar since October 2008. Ivan Eland, senior fellow at the Independent Institute, joins us now with more. Ivan, thank you for coming to Arise Exchange. Let me ask you, what is the latest on where we stand with negotiations? Well, I think they there's they haven't gone anywhere, and mm -hmm. uh, I think the government is definitely pressuring uh, because it wants to it it sees that the rand has declined and uh, wants action uh, to solve this crisis. As you mentioned, uh, platinum is very important for South Africa's foreign exchange earnings, and uh, so this is a very visible industry in South Africa and all, all over the world. And uh, of course, uh, that brings a lot of um, uh, pressure to settle the strike. And um, as our previous guest mentioned, when currency drops in poorer countries, it becomes a significant in in economic burden on people, especially those on the lower side of the classes. Let me ask you this. The government of South Africa, of course, came out of the labor union. So, and I was speaking to the trade minister this past week, Rob Davies, and I asked him about this. How difficult is it for the government to get involved and not take the union side? Ivan? Uh, yes, well, I think, I think the unions, certainly the, the government is more sympathetic with the unions. I think in any time a government gets between labor and business, no matter what country it's in, it, there, there's, there's long-term consequences. In, in the eight, late 1800s in the United States, it was the opposite. Uh, the, the government sided with businesses up until uh, Theodore Roosevelt uh, took the side of uh, miners in the coal strike. So I think... Uh, but but when you have government in the middle, it's it's very difficult to tell whether you're getting a fair settlement or not, or if it's just pressure, and whether that will be a long-term last, a long-lasting settlement, or whether it's just pressure to solve the problem so that the currency can go back up. Let me ask you something. South Africa has been having um, trouble with its economy for some time because it is a commodity-based economy. Uh, how much longer can this strike go on before South Africans really feel the impact? Well, I think, uh, you know, that's why the pressure is there to solve it. I think it probably will be solved fairly quickly because of the, the, high, the high profile that platinum has on the world markets and also uh, within the South African economy. So, you know, it's hard to say exactly how long it'll last, but I think the pressure is there to solve it. And can you run down for us some of the main issues here? Well, it's, as you were saying, you know, it's, it's wages really is the major one. The, the, the miners... Uh, are certainly not paid by, very much by Western standards, but they want to increase their salary more than double their wages, that is. And so uh, that's the major sticking point of, the, of, the, of the, the strike. And the position of the companies right now, uh, do you see any movement on their part? Are they going to come up with wages or are they sticking to their current position of, of where the wages are? Well, the companies claim that they're put in a bad position because of all the wildcat strikes right. in the last couple of years because there's two big uh, unions that are vying for for uh, uh, dominance in uh, South African labor, and they're fighting with each other. And uh, they they had these wild, wildcat strikes, which affected the mines. So the, the mine owners, the mine companies, they, they think that they're in no uh, position after these previous strikes to uh, give up that much of a wage increase to the miners. Well, you know, in most labor negotiations, when they conclude in the United States, they ban those so-called wildcat strikes. Uh, do you know if that was the case here, or would, do you think the companies may move if they put those bans in place? And then will the government, of course, uh, enforce wildcat strikes the, against wildcat strikes? Well, of course, that's the, that is the major question, uh, given, as you said, the South African government is... Uh, probably partial to the labor unions in this particular case. So the question is, even if you get an agreement, will the South African government honor that agreement? So, um, 
you know, it's, it's difficult to say, I suppose, how, how things are enforced, but uh, certainly there, there's a big, that's a big issue in the, in the negotiations. And what do you think they're talking about right now at the higher echelons of the government about how this looks to the rest of the world? Because this is such an important, crucial part of the economy for South Africa. Uh, at one point, because you say they are pro-union, at what point do they start to worry here and maybe start trying to push the union for concessions? Well, I think they probably will uh, reluctantly, but, uh, you know, the, the financial markets do matter and uh, certainly the currency uh, uh, markets matter. And I think that's going to be on the other side that the, the government is pro probably pro very much pro-labor. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, the world economy is pressuring on the other side to solve the crisis and for the government to ask the miners for, for to not, uh, you know, to, to make some concessions and uh, solve the strike. So, Ivan, basically you think that there's going to be a resolution relatively quickly. Any sort of timeline? And I know it's just a guess. Well, it is a guess, and I, but I'm just saying, I'm just thinking that the high-profile nature of this, uh, this commodity, uh, but there has been a lot of violence uh, in these wildcat strikes, and so if we have that, uh, mm -hmm. again, because they can't solve it, of course, uh, the thing could go on for a long time, and I, so I think that's also, uh, the potential for violence is also pressuring uh, the government to, to find a resolution in addition to the economic issues, so I think uh, that's why I think it may be solved uh, sooner rather than later. Okay, Ivan Elin, thank you for your opinion today. Appreciate it. Thank you.